Hi guys, it's Shelly Becker and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. I am a graduate entry medical student here at the University of Cambridge and I just so happen to be interested in obstetrics and gynecology for now, which means I'm interested in all things women, women's fertility, pregnancies, complicated pregnancies, so on and so forth. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about pregnancy tests. Time and time again, when I hear people discussing pregnancy tests or their pregnancy test results, I hear some variant of, that was the cheap test. This can't possibly be right. I better go and get a clear blue to verify my results, which kind of pertains to this concept or idea that the clear blue test is more accurate than an ordinary or alternative cheaper test. So in today's video, we're gonna be discussing pregnancy tests, whether clear blue is more accurate than your one pound or cheaper alternative. And we're gonna be delving a little bit into the science of what actually happens when someone becomes pregnant and how these tests actually work. So the first thing I want to address is what happens during a normal cycle. When I say cycle, I mean a menstrual cycle. So around day 14 of your menstrual cycle, an egg will be released from an egg follicle within the ovaries and it will travel down the fallopian tube to make its way into the uterus. So it's released from this egg follicle and the remnant of this egg follicle from which that egg was released is called a corpus luteum. And this structure becomes important because it releases hormones that sort of determine what happens happens to that egg and depends on whether it's fertilized or it remains unfertilized. So the structure that I just spoke about, the corpus luteum, the remnant of the place the egg came from, um, releases an important hormone called progesterone. What progesterone does, it has two main functions that I want to discuss today. Progesterone is a steroid hormone and one of the things it does is it promotes something called angiogenesis. So angiogenesis basically just means making new blood vessels and the place in which progesterone promotes the creation of new blood vessels is the lining of the uterus. And we're gonna call this lining the endometrium because that's what the lining of the uterus is called. Progesterone is released from the corpus luteum, which promotes new blood vessels to be built in the endometrium. And the reason for this is because if that egg potentially becomes fertilized or does become fertilized in the future, and it's gonna grow into a um, eventual fetus, it needs a rich supply of blood and nutrients in order to do so, in order to grow. The role of progesterone is essentially to get us ready, strapped in for a pregnancy every single month. Every month our body thinks, this might be the one, this might be the one, this might be the one, so we prepare ourselves. The second role progesterone has is it acts as an anti-contractile. Contractions is, means to squeeze, so contracts your muscles, but there are also muscles within the uterus. And so if the uterus does eventually contract, it expels all of its contents, which includes the lining of the uterus, the endometrium, which has all of these blood vessels, which includes the egg that is now in the uterus as well. So progesterone makes sure for one, that we're building and maintaining a lining in the endometrium and two it makes sure to keep everything inside the uterus until it's time to come out so if then the egg that is now in the uterus ready to be fertilized whenever whenever the sperm's ready and then the sperm never arrives then the corpus luteum structure which is responsible for spewing out all of this progesterone breaks down because it anticipates that there is not gonna be a fertilization. And when that corpus luteum breaks down, it also means that the supply of progesterone depletes. So we see um, the levels of progesterone go down. When this happens, two things, we don't get new blood vessels, but we also stimulate those contractions. And those contractions that expel out the lining of the endometrium, which will appear as blood, and the egg which we probably won't see. And that is what a period is. So if someone doesn't become pregnant, essentially they have a period. And then in the next cycle, all of those hormones will build themselves up again in anticipation for that sperm to arrive and that it probably doesn't because it's not like you get pregnant every month, right? So what then happens if that egg was instead fertilized? Because there are essentially two fates every time an egg is released. It gets fertilized or it doesn't get fertilized. 
And if it does get fertilised, what happens is that a placenta develops. And this placenta acts as yet another structure, among all of the other important things it does within a pregnancy, to release hormones. And one of the key hormones that it releases is HCG, which stands for Human Chorionic Gonadotropin. You don't really need to know what it stands for. Everyone just calls it HCG. HCG acts on the corpus luteum to stop it from breaking down and to promote it to continue to release progesterone. This means that we continue to build vasculature, blood vessels, and continue to be able to supply rich blood supply and nutrients to the now fertilized egg so that it can divide and grow and grow and grow and grow and eventually um, you hopefully end up with a fully grown baby. HCG then is only really present once an egg has been fertilized, i.e. you're pregnant, and a placenta has developed to release HCG. This is the hormone that um, pregnancy tests make use of in order to detect pregnancies because there shouldn't be a certain level of HCG circulating in your body if you're not pregnant and there should be if you are. Pregnancy tests essentially work by detecting this hormone um, and now we're going to talk a little bit about how pregnancy tests actually work and then we're going to be in a position to, to understand whether in fact clear blue is more accurate than an average, I don't know, 50p. Nowadays you can probably get them for two for one pound um, pregnancy test. As I said before, once you become pregnant, the levels of HCG in your body increase. And this is also that we don't expel the contents of our uterus, which is now a fertilized egg. And also so that we keep maintaining this supply of nutrients and blood to the fertilized egg. Pregnancy tests, including something like this, work by detecting this hormone called HCG. But the way in which they work is they have something in them called antibodies. And antibodies are small molecules which we can design so that they bind or hold on to something very, very, very specific. And in this case, in pregnancy tests, the antibodies are built such that they only bind and hold on to HCG hormone molecules. If you are pregnant, HCG will be circulating in your body, but some of it will also be expelled in your urine. We can use a urine sample to test if there is HCG present. And if there is HCG present, then that's an indicator that you are most likely pregnant. So the antibodies then inside of a pregnancy test, if they are dipped into urine, which contains HCG molecules, they will bind to the HCG molecules. And the antibodies have special enzymes attached to them, which are able to cause a color change in the strip from usually white to pink, which is why we end up seeing two distinct lines. There are two fates of a pregnancy test. It's quite simple, a strip test. You either have one line, which means you're not pregnant, or you have two lines, which means you are pregnant. And it's that second line that isn't always there that's produced by everything that I've just explained. So the binding of specific antibodies to HCG hormones to produce a color change from white to pink in the second line. That first line is always there and doesn't work quite in the same way. I won't explain what's going on there. Um, but the first line is always there just to show you that the pregnancy test is doing what it's supposed to do and it's not a defective test. So if you only have one line, that line would have been there even if you dipped it in water, just to tell you that this pregnancy test works, you can trust it. The second line only appears if there are antibodies which are bound to HCG. Otherwise the antibodies remain unbound, they don't bind to anything and they just remain floating around like this. If they remain floating around like this, they do not cause a color change. It's only once they find a HCG molecule to hold onto that they can cause the color change to produce the second strip. So for the most part, you can assume if you see two lines on a pregnancy test, then that's an indicator that you're pregnant. There are some cases where the test results will come up false. Um, and if you would be interested in learning all the scenarios in which you could get a false positive test, a false negative test, a darker line, a lighter line, and all of that good stuff, then let me know in the comments below and I will work on making a video for that as well. I find these things interesting, so committing to a new video is, is a little bit easier compared to committing to showing a tour of a Cambridge college or... 
I'll get to it. <laughs> so now to move on to a clear blue test because everything that I've just said is the mechanism behind a strip test, right? So again, to recap, the strip test is really easy to use. It's what I've got here. So you get a stick like this and you will need to produce urine into a small cup to dip this in below the line that says maximum and then wait to see either one strip or two strips. That's it. It's not that complicated. It's not for science freaks, this kind of test. One means no. Two means yes. And that's it. So what is so different about this clear blue test and why is it so popular? Well, clear blue uses the exact same technology that the 50p or 50 cent or 50 wherever you're from test uses. There is no more sophisticated technology in a clear blue test in comparison to a cheaper alternative. The only difference between a clear blue test and the cheaper alternative is that it's able to transduce the same message into a digital form so that it reads pregnant, not pregnant, instead of two lines, not two lines. Do you see how it's not worth the extra 10 pounds, 15 pounds that you're gonna spend on the test? The technology within them is the exact same. It uses antibodies that bind to HCG that then are able to um, produce the information that yes, there's HCG present or there isn't. And then the message is transduced in into a digital form. That's it. You're not getting more out of the clear blue test than you are out of a cheaper test. There is also a clear blue test that exists, which is able to give you um, an estimation of how far along you are. And it's not that it uses a fancy pants technology that the strip test doesn't have. It still uses the same technology, only it's able to look at the concentration of HCG. So essentially how much there is in your urine. So the further along you are, the more HCG you're producing. So essentially that test says, if there's only a tiny little bit, you're only one week. If there's a little bit more than that, you're two weeks. If there's a little bit more than that, then you're three plus weeks and that's it. So I guess if for you, you wanna know more than just am I pregnant yes or no and you want to know between the time scale of zero to three weeks how far along you are in that case then maybe a clear blue test is worth it but again once you visit a doctor you're probably going to find out how far along you are for free if you live in the UK if you live in America I personally would say that especially if you're using pregnancy tests to just routinely check um, for pregnancies because you're having sexual intercourse with a partner uh, regularly, then I would say definitely just buy a box of cheap tests. Like if you bought a box of clear blue tests, then you're paying a lot of money to have sex. And there we have it folks, is clear blue any more accurate than a cheaper alternative? They use the same technology so you go figure and once you book a doctor's appointment and the doctor feels like they want to check for pregnancies themselves using their own urine dipstick test they're not going to be using clear blue so you know if you trust the doctor then you can trust the poundland pregnancy test is essentially what i'm saying i think that's all i have for today i filmed two videos in one day i'm so proud of myself because usually i film two videos every two years so you know stepping up the game let me know what you think if you liked it like it like the video and if you really really liked it then subscribe if you really 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 liked it then you should comment and tell me that you did because it's useful when people say like oh i like this kind of stuff then it makes me feel like yeah i'm right to be interested in this and want to share it with other people because other people like like this kind of stuff just as much as i do bye